All right, tech family, I am delighted to bring you my review of Intel's new 13th gen Raptor Lake processors for laptops. With me are two early stage sample laptops, one with Intel's brand new i9-13900HX processor and the other with their i7-13700H. And today we're going to do a lot of testing and see how these perform and how they compare with prior year's models, as well as the best AMD and Apple have to offer. And guys, I promise you, this is going to be an awesome one. I went nuts testing these, culminating with me running multiple tests of the i9 laptop in a freezer on a cooling pad. More on that later. If you're unfamiliar with Intel's lineup, the HX and H series processors are part of their higher performance line. The i9-13900HX is towards the top of the stack and will likely be found in the most powerful laptops released in 2023. This includes large and expensive gaming ones, as well as high-end creator ones. These i9HX processors, I believe, are the most exciting in the 13th gen range. Compared to prime model i9s, they bump the cores up from a total of 14 to a whopping 24. That includes an additional two performance cores and eight efficient ones. And unlike 12th Gen i9 models, these are designed to draw 55 watts of power, where those were designed to draw 45. In fact, the whole HX lineup is designed to draw that extra 10 watts of power. The i7-13700H is a step down, still designed for very powerful laptops like those for gaming and content creation, but just not at the absolute highest end like the i9HX processors. In fact, I'd assume the 13700H, like in prior years, will be the most common processor for performance-focused laptops. It is a bit of a direct replacement to last year's 12700H with the same amount of cores and designed to operate with the same 45 watt power draw. There is also the P-series and U-series line, which I'm not testing today. Those are designed for small and portable Ultrabooks. Intel's lineup is becoming very confusing, very confusing. In the old days, an i7 was faster than an i5. Simple. Now it's a complete mess. You need to start by looking within the range they are a part of. HX being the highest power drawing processors at 55 watts, then H at 45, followed by P and then U. But what you're about to see today is even that doesn't tell you which laptop is faster. These laptops can all be turboed. This is where the laptop feeds its processor more power for higher performance, above the amount I just mentioned. This is normally for speeding up a very short running task, i.e. opening a program or doing a code recompile. All things being equal, when you feed more power to a processor, the processor gets hotter. Laptop manufacturers have some choices to make. They could allow the processor to just run hotter, but there is a max of 100 degrees Celsius, which they can't go above. Also, a hotter processor generally equates to an uncomfortably warm feeling laptop. They could instead increase the speed the fans run to cool the processor, but that means you'll hear annoying fan noise. And some laptops don't have effective airflow for cooling anyway. Or manufacturers can reduce the power fed to the processor, which of course cools it down, but also slows down the performance. What I'm trying to say with all that techno mumbo jumbo is the same processor in two different laptops could perform vastly different based on how well the processor can be cooled, how much power the manufacturer chooses to feed to it, and how hot they allow it to run. And today, you're really going to see that in action. Now, before we get into testing, a couple of notes. As mentioned, these laptops are early stage samples. Both are based on the new XMG Neo 16 that was announced at CES 2023. These are larger, thicker gaming laptops, so expect these to perform similar to other larger laptops with good cooling solutions. Performance will be worse if manufacturers shove these processors in small laptops. Since these are early stage samples, things like drivers, firmware, etc. may be improved by the time these laptops go on sale. And my i7-13700H laptop unfortunately only has DDR4 RAM. These new processors support both DDR4 as well as the faster DDR5 RAM. That being said, Jared from Jared's Tech recently compared DDR4 vs 5 in the same laptop. He found that while there was around an 11% difference in Geekbench multi-core performance, there was only a 1% difference in Cinebench. As I'm going to use Cinebench almost exclusively in this video, not completely, but, but almost, this shouldn't cause much of a difference. And my i9 laptop does have DDR5 RAM anyway. On that note, you will be able to buy laptops with faster DDR5 RAM. Mine is using 4800 MHz. I don't expect that to materially change my results though. Let's start by looking at how these laptops perform versus other laptops with prior gen Intel processors, as well as those with AMD and Apple. Then, Afterwards, we'll go nuts and see how much performance we can squeeze out of these. 
Anyway, to compare these with others, I tested each on their default balance mode, which tends to be a good balance between fan noise and performance, as well as their full performance modes. I also ran the tests several times to ensure the results I'm showing you were not outliers. Let's start with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. When using the laptop's default balance mode, you can see that the i9 with its extra cores crushes it, easily beating any other laptop that came before it. The i7 actually performs worse in multi-core than the i7 from last year in my Dell XPS 17. The i7 also underperforms against the MacBook Pro 16 with its most powerful M1 Pro Max chip in multi-core. I believe this difference will be somewhat negated if I had faster RAM in that laptop though. Both the i9 and i7 do very well in single core, beating out every other laptop. It's a similar story when the laptops are run in their performance modes. By the way, if you see the older 12th Gen 12700H performing a lot worse in my HP Pavilion 14 Plus, I included it as an example of what I mentioned earlier. What happens if a manufacturer shoves one of these high performance processors in a small chassis that doesn't have enough airflow to cool it? By the way, time out. If you're watching this video and don't know what single and multi-core is, single core performance refers to how fast a single thing will run. Multi-core performance refers to how well multiple things can be run at the same time, either within an application or multiple applications. In the old days, most applications were single-threaded, so multi-core performance would be irrelevant. In today's day and age, many applications are being coded to take advantage of multiple threads. For example, high-end content creation applications have already switched to take advantage of this, and in future, more and more programs will certainly be doing so. So, I personally feel that multi-core performance is more important in the long term. However, single-core performance will still make many programs feel more snappy. Okay, let's switch to Cinebench, which tests how the laptops perform when their processor is maxed out. The i9 again completely dominates. Seriously, can we just take a moment? A score of almost 30,000 in this test is absolutely breathtaking. This is high-end desktop level performance. When it comes to the i7 processor, it's very good, but funnily enough, in multi-core, not much better than my XPS 17 from last year. That being said, its single-core result is better. These findings were similar when the laptops were run in their default balance mode. Let's delve deeper to see what is happening. I proceeded to run a 10-minute torture test of Cinebench R23 on a loop. The i7 now starts to shine. It barely dropped its performance during this time, indicating the cooling solution in this laptop is up to the task of keeping this processor cool. It now smashes my XPS 17 with last year's processor. That laptop can't keep the processor running at a high power draw. It clearly has to lower its performance to keep it running at a desired operating temperature. The 13th Gen i9HX did very well, but couldn't sustain its ludicrously high performance on the performance mode and it had to drop a bit. During this time, the i9HX initially drew a whopping 154 watts of power, but then averaged 81. The i7 drew 90 watts of power and averaged 88. On operating temperatures, this is where this laptop, the XMG Neo 16, with these processors really shines. The laptop's cooling solution is clearly top-notch. The i7 runs extremely cool compared to other laptops I've tested, maxing out at 82 Celsius on performance mode. This is super cool, even cooler than the AMD processor in my Legion 7. The i9 does get hot on performance mode, hitting 97 Celsius. With this in mind, I would expect that if more power was fed to the i7 processor and it was allowed to run hotter, we would get more performance out of it. Seeing that, I delved into the custom power profiles that these XMG laptops allowed me to set. Here is a graph of how the i9 processor performs in a single run of Cinebench Multicore as I raise the max power the laptop will feed to the processor. For the technical folks, my i9 can be set to a max PL1 and PL2 limit of 160 watts. After that, I'm only raising the PL4 limit further to 250 watts. What you'll see here with a thick blue line is there is no point sending more than 170 watts to this CPU. You really don't get any extra uplift in performance. The thin blue line will show you that performance per watt of power drops pretty substantially after the processor gets more than 55 watts, which funnily enough is the rated long-term amount. The red and orange bars show the max and average power draw in watts that the processor drew. As you can see, at a certain point, the laptop struggles to use the additional power as it likely can't keep the processor operating at a safe temperature. 
Switching to the i7, which has a max PL1 and PL2 of 90 watts and an absolute power limit of 160. Here is how it looks, similar story to the i9, however keep in mind what I mentioned earlier. In this chassis, the i7 doesn't get hot, even on the performance mode. I'd like to see a firmware update for the i7 to run a bit hotter and perform a bit better. Now let's take a look at fan noise you hear during a 10 minute torture test, which by the way is the worst case scenario. The i7 is super quiet, I think it's the quietest Windows high performance laptop I've tested when running on a performance mode. I'm not including the Pavilion Plus by the way, as that's a thin and light laptop that doesn't perform well at all when configured with an H series processor. The i9 though, when running on its performance mode is loud, in line with very high performing gaming laptops. And let's finally look at heat you'd feel during the torture test. For both the i7 and i9 version of this laptop it is insanely good. The i7 version feels cooler than the MacBook Pro 16 whose claim to fame is that it runs insanely quiet and cool to the touch. That being said, in all fairness this XMG laptop is larger. So far I've learnt the following. 1. The Intel 13th Gen i9 HX processor is an absolute performance monster. 2. The i7-13700H is not that much better than the older model, just a little bit in single core, which doesn't surprise me as it's really the same lithography, same number of cores etc. If you find a great 12th gen H series laptop at a great price, I wouldn't feel bad about buying it over the 13th gen. 3. On that note, buy the laptop not the processor. These 13th gen processors will perform vastly different depending on how well the chassis can cool the processor and how much power the laptop manufacturer feeds it with. 4. There is substantial diminishing marginal returns once you feed these processors a certain amount of power. And 5. The XMG Neo 16 is an insanely awesome laptop, excellent cooling, and I've enjoyed many other aspects of it like the keyboard and screen. If you're looking to buy a new laptop, make sure to check them out. Just ensure you buy from the right company for your region. XMG sells in Europe. In the USA, this laptop is sold by Electronics and it's called the Mech 16. You'll want to buy from the right seller for your region to get the right keyboard layout, support, etc. But I gotta say this, I saw my friend Jared post his Cinebench score of over 30,000 for the i9 version of this laptop. And the competitive side of me awoke. I think we can do better. Heck, what is the highest Cinebench score ever recorded on a laptop? I want that. So to hopefully claim the title of the fastest ever Cinebench score on a laptop, I kept testing. I first tried putting the laptop on a cooling pad and it certainly helped. I got over 29,000 but still not his 30,000 points. So I put the laptop in the freezer on a cooling pad, which was plugged in and running by the way. After trying different power limits I got a score of 30,448 but it still wasn't enough. I wanted to break the 31,000 barrier. So I left the laptop in the freezer for about half an hour to cool it down. Seriously, the CPU was running below 28 degrees Celsius when it was idling, which is nuts. I then turned the laptop's fan on max and bam, over 31,000 points. Let me know in the comments below if that's the highest ever Cinebench score recorded on a laptop. I think it might be. And stating the obvious, I hope that is, please do not put your laptop in the freezer. Ever. Well, that's all for today folks. I hope you liked this video. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. If you did, please make sure you're subscribed and click the like button. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. And as I always say, it makes my dearest mother very proud. If you're feeling a little generous, become a Patreon supporter. It helps keep my channel completely independent and unbiased. Links below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.